Hey everyone, welcome to worship this day, this second Sunday of Easter. I'm so happy that each and every one of you are here this morning as you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, and also a wonderful welcome to those who are listening into the audio of this service on WKDK. We are so happy that each and every one of you are here as we get to give praise and worship to our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Before we begin worship this morning, we do have a few announcements. Uh, first and foremost, as I've said for the last few weeks, continue to offer yourselves grace and grace to those who are around you. This is still a pretty turbulent and chaotic time in our lives. And I think now that we're at the point where many of us are, are getting a little more irritated with those who are around us and there's more opportunity uh, to give grace and to receive grace as well. Know that always that God gives each and, uh, each and every one of us grace and we are called to give others that same grace as well, especially during really difficult and odd times. Also, uh, the church continues to move forward with, it, with its ministry. Uh, things still happen here that the uh, uh, video systems are being implemented, lighting systems are on their way, uh, the church playground is going to be installed soon, uh, and also the church is moving forward with hiring a part-time youth director uh, to begin hopefully at the start of this coming uh, school year uh, after the summer. Exciting things are going on at Redeemer, and you are still encouraged to give as you are able uh, and to, to practice the disciple, the discipline and the discipleship of, of giving uh, to the ministry here at Redeemer, but also giving to those places that need it within our community as well. If you'd like to give to Redeemer, you can mail or drop off a check, uh, your offering check at 1515 Boundary Street, uh, or even signing up uh, to give online on our website at lutheranredeemer.org, or even giving on the Giving Plus app on your iPhone or Android device. Again, ministry continues to happen in this place. But with no further announcements, uh, I ask that we uh, prepare our hearts and minds for worship this day as we begin worship this second Sunday of Easter.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the deserts you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this place, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty, and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise, through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, 
May we who have not seen have faith in you and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. According to St. John, the twentieth chapter. It was still the first day of the week, that evening while the disciples were behind closed doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities. Jesus came and stood among them. He said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they aren't forgiven. Thomas, the one called Didymus, one of the twelve, wasn't with the disciples when Jesus came. The other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But Thomas replied, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, put my finger in the wounds left by the nails, and put my hands into his side, I won't believe. After eight days, his disciples were again in a house, and Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus entered and stood among them. He said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. Look at my hands. Put your hand in my side. No more disbelief. Believe. Thomas responded to Jesus, My Lord and my God. Jesus replied, Do you believe because you see me? Happy are those who don't see and yet believe. Then Jesus did many other miraculous signs in his disciples' presence, signs that aren't recorded in this scroll, but these things are written so that you will believe that Jesus is the Christ, God's Son, and that believing you will have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to each of you during this beautiful and wonderful Easter season. Will you all pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So, what a first week in Easter, right? This past week has been vastly different than any previous first week in Easter we've ever experienced. I had a few conversations with some folks at Redeemer that have ranged from well, that service was better than I expected, where I think they meant they felt like they had as close to a usual Easter service as they possibly could get, to being bittersweet, where it just reminded them of what they miss so much, even if it was good to be in worship. It's different. It's a bit confusing. We don't know how to act, react, or even just be during this weird time in the world. People are getting a bit irritated with one another as we continue to spend more and more time inside and not being able to do the things that we enjoy. I've heard from some that now the doldrums are starting to hit harder as we continue through this weird time. Every day is eerily similar to the one before. 
I can see this happening in my own life, where my daughters ask, Dad, what day is it today? And usually I respond, well, I think it's Blurg's Day on Blood Eberly, because each day runs into one another. And that's just what's happening in our homes. Outside, tough conversations are being had with economists, doctors, and those who make decisions within all areas of life in our country and world about how to proceed going forward. There is a lot of talk. There is a lot of questions. There's a lot of I don't knows going on. Perhaps there needs to be more admission that we don't know what's going on and asking for grace as we move through it. As each day of this pandemic quarantine has gone on, especially as we've entered into this season of Easter, I've been thinking more and more about the text we hear today from John's Gospel. This is a text and story that we in the Lutheran Church and almost all churches that follow the liturgical year here the week after Easter Sunday. This story of the disciples gathered in that room, knowing that something has happened to Jesus, something good, though pretty unbelievable. The disciples that night are locked in the room as they continue to ponder and think and discuss what the witness of the women those first preachers of Jesus' resurrection had told them. I imagine there is excitement and confusion and joy. And we know that there is fear, too. Fear that this can't be real. Fear of what will happen to them if they proclaim and share what they know. Fear. In many ways, I think we live in a sense of fear at this moment as well. We're fearful of contracting a virus that could cause massive damage and death to those we love. We're fearful of spreading that virus to others unknowingly. We're feel fearful of what more weeks of distancing will do to our communities. Which stores and businesses will survive? Who will lose their jobs? What will our own breaking points look like? As we ponder about how we move forward in this new normal, we're fearful of contributing to, potent, uh, to a potential spike in new cases of this novel coronavirus. We're fearful of what might happen if this virus mutates and changes slightly. We're fearful of what others will say if we disagree with their desires and intentions. We're fearful. And in many ways, we're locked in our own rooms and in our homes too. More so than any year. This year looks a lot like that very first Easter. We're fearful that if we don't get out, that we'll be considered weak, or that we don't have enough faith, or that we don't really care about others in the world. Have you ever wondered if the conversations that the disciples had in that room were perhaps similar? Were there those who were staunch about, we need to go out there and tell everyone who cares if we die? Were there those who said, I know what the experts, those women have said, but I'm just not sure. Perhaps some have even intimated that if you don't think this way about getting out and proclaiming what's happened, you are weak in your faith. You're not a true believer. You're not really with the Lord. Unfortunately, those are similar questions and conversations that are happening right now, even especially that final one. I've sadly heard from some strong, faithful, and loving individuals who feel like they're being bullied about their faith during this stressful and concerning time. All of those instances and acts, whether they be what we ponder the disciples might have been talking about or what we are talking about, they are all tinged and framed in fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear of not being faithful enough. Fear of what God might be thinking. Fear. Even the ones who seem the most confident, who are the loudest and who are the most stubborn about what to do next are operating in a sense of fear. Fear. It is where we find the disciples the first night of the resurrection. In more ways than one, it is where we find ourselves in this very moment. Fear. 
And then Jesus enters, literally out of nowhere. Jesus appears to those disciples. Jesus shows up when they least expect it, even though they know he's around somewhere. And the very first words out of Jesus' mouth are not words of chastisement. They aren't words of disappointment. They aren't words of anger. No, in spite of and despite the disciples' fear, they hear words of love from the Lord. Peace be with you. It is so important for Jesus to love and care for his friends that he says it twice. Peace be with you. What absolutely unexpected words of comfort from our Lord to those who know him. I don't think anyone would bat an eye if Jesus were to raise Cain at his supposedly faithful disciples. I don't think anyone would feel Jesus was in the wrong if he burst through those doors, walked right up to Peter and said, Dude, really? I warned you about this. I don't think anyone would have thought Jesus would have been out of line if he smacked all the disciples and heavily sighed and said, Y'all, we literally talked about this a lot. We wouldn't object to that because we know deep down that's how each and every one of us would react. It's how many of us just might be acting or seeing others act in this weird and confusing time right now. Thankfully, gracefully, Jesus doesn't operate by what we think is right. Jesus brings peace amidst fear. Jesus brings calm to the storm through simple words. Jesus is not disappointed or exacerbated or irritated by the disciples. Jesus loves them. Jesus brings them peace. In these confusing times and at all times, Jesus is not disappointed or exacerbated or irritated by you. Jesus loves you. Jesus brings you peace. Jesus breathes the Holy Spirit into the life of the world, into each of us. Even when we have questions or concerns like faithful Thomas, Jesus brings us peace and love. Yet here's the thing, the really important thing. Jesus brings us peace. Yes, Jesus uh, brings calm to our storms. Yes, Jesus brings comfort in moments of fear. But Jesus doesn't stop there. We know that Jesus is with us. We know that Jesus is present. When we receive that phone call or that text or that message from our friends who are checking in, when we see children riding their bikes with their families, when we step outside of our homes and hear the sounds of birds and animals and insects, that sound that is no longer overshadowed by the sounds of the world, we know that Jesus is there with us, bringing comfort to our troubled hearts, bringing peace to our stormy waters. Jesus calls us to proclaim. Jesus invites us to share. Jesus beckons us to give grace and peace to those around us as well. Jesus sends us out into the world to bring comfort, to offer grace, to grant forgiveness, so that a world enveloped and wrapped in fear, we just might know that God loves them always, no matter what. No questions asked, no litmus test to pass. God loves them. God loves you. Remember that always. Amen.
us now confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Open the doors we close, O God, when we fear those who worship you in different ways. Guide us to unity and harmony, so that we may come to respect and cherish our commonalities. Lord, in your mercy. Open the paths we ignore, O God, when we prioritize financial gain and convenience over listening to the groaning of the earth. Inspire all to care for the world you have made so that loving things might thrive. Lord, in your mercy. Open the rooms we lock, O God, to those who live without a homeland or place of safety. We pray that generous nations offer refuge and peace for all. Lord, in your mercy. Open the hearts we close, O God, to the cries of those in pain. We pray for those isolated physically or emotionally through incarceration, addiction, mental illness, chronic suffering, grief, and all in need. We especially pray for those whom we lift up to you both spoken in our hearts and aloud upon our lips at this time. Lord, in your mercy, open the ways of love, O God, in the pursuit of peace throughout the world, and bless the efforts of missionaries, healthcare professionals, activists for women and children, and relief workers, especially those who find themselves in harm's way. We especially pray for those who are at the forefront of caring for those within the midst of this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy. Guide us to see you at work through us and others. We especially pray for our prayer partners this week, St. Andrew's Lutheran Church in Columbia, South Carolina, their pastor, John Trump, and their deacon, Sandra Holland. We also pray for our presiding bishop, Elizabeth Eaton, and our synodical bishop, Herman Yos, and their respective staffs. Be present with our companion synods of Colombia, Japan, and the Southwest Diocese of Tanzania. May they all know that you are present in their ministry to those in need. Lord, in your mercy. Open the way to eternal life, O God, as we remember those who have died in faith. Free us from the fear of death that we may embrace the peace you have promised. Lord, in your mercy. With bold confidence in your loving, almighty God, we pray, place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, now and forever. Amen. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you in the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen.
Now we receive our sending and blessing for this day. Christ is risen just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.